All right, good morning, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back. Exciting day. Maybe the start of some action. Just maybe the start of some action. Yesterday, very nice. Finally, I forgot what it felt like for the market to move. Uh, awesome. So congrats on congrats to you guys. That caught some of that juicy downside, some of that dark side. Unfortunately, I was not there with you. Uh, but it is what it is. Always another opportunity. Everything I missed yesterday could be made today. That's how we have to continue to focus and continue to, you know, come into every day. So nice downside, very nice key rejections like we talked about here in the live stream. Uh, that 18.4 NASDAQ supply, sick, sick rejection there. So very, very nice. We'll obviously go over everything once we get some more people stepping in. So good morning, guys. Welcome back. Rangers victory, Chef. Gotta love it, man. Got to love it. And I hit my bet I made in February. <laughs> I made that bet back in February for uh, Eastern Conference champions for the Rangers. And that was, uh, that's a nice win. They want me to, <laughs> that's funny. They gave me a, uh, oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't catch the whole move. Hey man, you're never going to catch the whole move. Never, 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 never. Never very hard to be able to catch every single cent of the move. So if you catch a piece, that's really all we're here for. Here to catch a piece. Piece of the pie. Yeah, Sync didn't mention be cautious. Yeah, you you cash, you quiche. Yeah, I mean it was good, man. The pre market upside, like we said, always gotta be careful of that pre market upside, and that's sort of what I'm looking for today again. I'm looking for some more pre-market upside to see where we fade. Uh, that was yesterday's move. We got that pre-market upside into some major rejection points, uh, into that 18.4, that 20 SMA on NASDAQ, and uh, awesome, right? So let's get some more pre-market upside, right? If we want to continue to fade this market, we want green pre-markets. We do not want red pre-markets. Red pre-markets uh, usually lead to like sort of overextension to the downside and then sort of that grind back higher intraday. Um, so I want some, gr I want some of those green pre markets into some rejection points. If we want to look for downside, that's really the key. That's sort of the perfect, uh, you know, sort of perf the best case scenario. If we want downside intraday is those weak, uh, pre market upsides on no volume, right? So we'll see. We'll see what we get today. Right now, we are holding some key levels. Uh, we're holding a 17.8 level on the on the NASDAQ futures. Um, we are holding a SPY 503 level, which is a key level as well. Um, so there's definitely some key demands below that uh, we do need to pay attention to. And uh, we have to be careful shorting into, of course, like every other day, as much downside as we had yesterday. Uh, we need to understand, hey, we've moved down quite a bit into some key levels. Let's get a bounce, right? And then let's see if there's another fade. That's sort of my eyes, right? That's where I'm going to be looking. I don't want to just short into, into holes, right? I don't want to, as much as I you know, want to continue to look for downside, if it's there, I don't want to short into holes, right? There's no, there's no reason to just get excited and start shorting into key, key demands. So um, that's going to be key, right? Moving forward is... Where is the rejection point? Let's get a fade back to the, let's get a move back to the upside and see where it rejects. Staying patient for that, waiting for the market to show us that. Uh, that was one of my, uh, one of my problems yesterday uh, was just a little bit too, I anticipated a little bit too much, didn't wait for the market to show me the real direction. And that's sort of what got me caught up yesterday. So that's a big focus of mine today. Let's let the market decide where it wants to go where it wants to reject, and then really read that price action at some of our key levels. So, um, yeah, what was it, 804, 805? All right, let's get started. So press that like button if you guys could. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you are new. We're almost to 80,000 subs. 
It would be great to get to 100K by end of year. We got about, what is that, eight more months? Um, just about eight more months to get 20,000 subscribers. So we'll see if we can do it. Let's pull up that economic calendar. Let's pull up that earnings calendar. We're back in the swing of things on earnings. Pull that up real quick. Bam, right there. All right. So pulling up the economic. Here we go. Today, um, not much, which is, I think, good, right? I think good, right? Not much. We have uh, building permits this morning, 830. Building permits, housing starts. Um, we have some FOMC members speaking. 915 industrial production, ca capacity utilization rate. Nothing too crazy there. Uh, FOMC member speaking at 1231 o'clock. The only thing I'd say that's maybe the major thing today is, is, is Jerome Powell. Papa Powell speaking at 115. So I guess be careful of that, right? If you're in any trades around 115 today, I'd say that's about your major event of the day. Really the most important of the day is right there. Uh, Jerome Powell, 115. Besides that, pretty light. Nothing that I think is going to drastically affect this market. Um, so I would just say watch out for the 115 time frame uh, today. All right. Tomorrow, pretty light. Just some Fed presidents speaking, FOMC members speaking, oil inventories. Uh, and then Thursday, our normal unemployment claims. That's the one to watch there. Existing home sales. And we pretty much end the week there. Um, so today, 115, probably your major event of the day. All right. Um, let me go ahead and pull up that earnings calendar. Get that popped up for us. Here it is. Today we have, or at least this morning, we had Bank of America, UNH. UNH doing very good. Uh, we saw a big upside on UNH this morning. That is definitely helping the Dow Jones this morning. UNH is, it's either one or two largest uh, participants in the Dow. So UNH definitely helping the Dow higher. Uh, that is this morning. Dow, or UNH Green, Dow higher right there. Bank of America, J&J, &J, Morgan Stanley, some more banks reporting. Uh, tonight, United United Airlines, Interactive Brokers. Tomorrow, probably one of the larger days because of ASML. This is a semiconductor. This should be something to watch if you are trading semiconductor stocks, something to be paying attention to there, as well as TSM on Thursday. So ASML, TSM, some big ones there. Uh, and then you have your Netflix on uh, on Thursday. All right. So today, nothing too big. I'd say the the major focus of the day right now is that UNH is up. UNH is up pretty nicely off of earnings, and that's sort of just helping the Dow Jones as of now as much as it can as of right now. Um, could keep an eye on that XLV if you'd like. XLV is the healthcare sector. You could sort of watch that if you're interested in seeing where that healthcare move goes. I'm not that it, I'm not that intrigued in you know, trading the XLV. But if you want to keep an eye on that UNH, then I'd say watch that XLV and see how it continues. But yeah, for now, a little pop on that UNH uh, earnings. Nothing I'm that focused on. All right. Let's get into the NASDAQ. So some important levels here and important things to focus on here today. And uh, we definitely got to lock in on, on the levels above, levels below. So right now, I have this 17.8 level right here, 17.8. 17.8 is a previous level of very strong support back here in January, February. Right here around 17.8, we were able to maintain quite a bit, right? Not perfect. It was more of like this range here between 18 and 17.7. Um, but we definitely had some 17.8 action back in that zone, right? So you can see right now we have a little bit of 17.8 hold that's stepping in right now in the market. Underneath that 17.8 is that extreme low of that previous channel here around that 17.7. And guess what else is there? The 100 SMA. Okay, so that's going to probably be your extreme low uh, or at least where maybe we're targeting for the downside. Uh, that is going to be a major level. Uh, you can see underneath 17.8, there is very little support, right? Because of this big pop back in January. Under 17.8, you could even see like an extended move to 17.3, right? So 17.8, I'm sorry, 17.7, um, 17,700 and that 100 SMA I think is a major inflection point. So 
that's going to be something we really need to focus on. We have the 100 SMA on the NASDAQ, and we have a major previous low here at 17,700. That's going to be a big spot. Uh, so you need to have that on your charts, in my opinion. If we go down to the 30-minute chart and we sort of review some of the short-term action, you guys can see, for now, the 17.8 is holding on. Right? So this is where the pre-market sort of holding on today at 17,800. Below that 17,800, you guys can see right here, we have that 100 SMA. Right? So some pretty interesting levels below current price action that could definitely hold us higher. One of them, 17.8. The other one, 17.7, uh, 200 or 100 SMA right there, and then the the 17.8 demand. So we have to be careful of, all right, you know, just straight downside into these levels uh, without some kind of a bounce and fade, right? We want if we want to look to short, I still believe you want bounces and fades rather than just shorting into these lows. So 17.8, 17.7, be careful down in these levels. 100 SMA, I would be shocked if we just sort of failed right under that and just continued lower i'm going to assume this battles for a short period of time uh so be aware of that 100 be aware of this 17.8 could be some battles at these zones today uh to the upside and where i really want to see us pop and then you know find those rejections the first one is without a doubt 18,000. okay so 18,000 is probably one of the clearest levels you could be watching it's a very obvious previous high here, uh, 18,000. You can see right here, 18,000 as well. So 18,000 is without a doubt the first um, level of rejection that I would be watching, right? If we pop into that 18,000, is that the level that we start to find rejections at? So let me zoom in here on the hourly chart. And you can see right here, this 18,000. And if we pop into that 18,000, is that the level we start to find rejections at? So that's number one. Number one is 18,000 on the NASDAQ futures. So this is one right here. Level one, 18K. Level two, for me, would be 18,050. That is right here. That is that uh, low here from that Thursday drop. This is also FO, or, yeah, FO, uh, CPI lows. This is CPI here. The CPI lows was on was around 18,050 that is right here so that's level two level two is 18,050 and that is your cpi low that is this thursday low i'm not sure if this was fomc what was this on thursday who can remind i don't remember what this thursday move was might have just been a big downside move i don't know if this was a day i know this was cpi um but we can see right 18,050, 18,050, that would be my next spot to watch, 18,050, and then 18,000. Above both of those levels, I would watch the Friday lows. The Friday lows of around that 18,126, 18,130, that would be level three for me. So I have three levels that I am watching for pops and rejections. This is PPA? This is, wasn't that last week? Yeah, that was the Fed. Okay, yes, correct, yes. This was, guys, this was CPI, PPI. This was the Fed president, yep. This was the Fed spook right there, and then this was CPI, PPI, Wednesday, Thursday. Yes, okay. So you have CPI, PPI, and then that Fed president spook back here on the Thursday of uh the April 4th. Um, so 18,000, 18,050, and 18,130 are my three levels that I'm watching for the pops and fades today. I'm looking to see if we can pop into those levels and then start to see what happens at those levels. Yesterday, right, one of the cleanest levels that we had yesterday was the Friday low, okay? So right here, Friday low, right? You guys saw that Friday low come in on f last week, right there. That is the exact level that did a break and retest yesterday, causing aggressive downside, right? Friday low right here. Look at how we dropped and rejected that level yesterday. Look at how perfect that was yesterday. That was a beautiful opportunity, right? So right there, 
18-130, Um, And look at how beautiful that rejection was yesterday under Friday's lows. So if we come back into that Friday low, right, that would be a fantastic spot to look to see if there is a rejection play again, right? If we reclaim or if we pop back into this rejection yesterday and back into those Friday lows, that could be a big spot to watch. So we definitely want to have that on our charts, right? 18,130, 18,126, big spot up there and a major rejection from yesterday. This really was the level that created the large downside yesterday, the last leg lower. That was right because of a break and retest under Friday's lows at 18,126. That's big. That's a must watch level. If we do pop into that level, be careful of the rejections. Okay. Then you have that low at 18,050 and of course the 18,000. So those are the levels I'll be watching today. Right. I'll be watching to see when we come into these levels, which I think we will. Right. Um, then I would like to see what starts to occur at these levels. Okay. If we draw out the fib, right, for the fib boys, we'll take a look at that fib. We'll take it just from yesterday's low. We can see it sort of correlates if we take it all the way down here uh, into the today's lows. The 38.2 correlates pretty much perfectly with that 18,000, right? 38.2 retracement. The 50% retracement is right around that 18.5. And then the 61.8 is right around that 18.130, right? So those, uh, those Fibonacci retracements line up pretty much perfectly with some of these levels that we have, 18, 18,050, and 18,130. Big demand below at 17.8, big demand below at 18 or 17.7, and the 100 SMA. QQQ, the most important level of the day is right here. This is a must-watch level. 433 on the QQQ is a must-watch level. Um, why? Why is that such an important level? Well, it's pretty clear. Uh, that is the gap, right, that we have entered on the NVIDIA earnings gap up, right? If we go ahead and take off the after hours trading, uh, you guys can see right here that we are in, we are living in a gap on the QQQ right now. We are living below 433, and below 433, there is a gap to 426, okay? This is a er NVIDIA earnings gap up right here between 433 and 426. So right now, the market is living in a gap. We are living inside of that NVIDIA gap fill area. Uh, and so what would we want to see for weakness to stay in? We would want to see these previous lows right here turn into a rejection point, right? Right here, right here, right here, right here. 433. If we cannot get above 433 today, there is every reason, right, to look for that downside continuation for that gap fill towards that 426, okay? So that is absolutely number one top watch of the day is what happens at $433 per share on the QQQ. That is a very clear level and a very important uh, gap fill level there at 433, right there. That is pretty much 18,000 on the NASDAQ futures, right? It's the exact same level. 18K NQ futures, 433 QQQ. Same exact level. That is major right there on the Qs. Above that, 435, right? Right here, CPI lows, uh, that Thursday low, that Fed president low, and that is what? 435. So that's number two. So number one, number two, number three is that 437. That's Friday's lows. Right. Why is Friday's lows important? Well, if we go to the five-minute chart, let's take a look at what happened at 437 yesterday. This is what I was just talking about on the NASDAQ, NASDAQ futures. Friday lows, 437. What happened yesterday? Break and retest, rejection. That is what caused the aggressive downside. The aggressive downside yesterday came in off a break and retest rejection of 437. Why? Because it was Friday's lows, right? Right there, 437. If we go to yesterday, break, retest, rejection, 437, beautiful. Absolutely textbook. That is a, that is a great, uh, you know, just a great read there on the market. And why the market did what it did, it makes a whole hell of a lot of sense, right? The fact that we broke under the Friday low, turned it into a rejection, is obviously going to cause weakness. So those are the levels that I'm watching. 
433, major gap to level, major level to see if we stay below. If we do, I like weakness. If we get above that, 435. If we get above that, 437. Those are the three levels, one, two, and three. All right? If we stay under this 433, I'm going to assume weakness stays in and we try to hit this gap fill target around 426. Um, that's at least what I'm looking for. So that's that. ES. Let's go out to the hourly chart. Actually, no, let's start on the four hour on the ES and let me show you guys where we've come back down into. So right now the ES has come back down into this 5080. We had this level on our charts yesterday, 5080. That's a big demand. Under that, we have this major low around that 5020. And guess what? What's down at that major low, 5020? That is the 100 SMA, right? So is the market targeting the 100 SMA for downside? Very possible, right? Is that possibly where this slide needs to come down into? Do we need to come down to the 100 SMA on NASDAQ? Do we need to come down into the 100 SMA on ES? These are two, you know, it's something to consider, right? Is that where the target is coming down into? Are we targeting that 100 SMA on both NQES? Very possible. Now, today, you can see 5080 is holding. What level do we need to see the market reject to stay weak today, or at least to stay extremely weak? It would be, in my eyes, 5130. 5127, 5130. Uh, let's go Rangers, Brad. Hell yeah. Um, 5127, 5130. Why? Look how important this is. Previous double bottom high into double bottom lows. Right there at that 5130, 5127. That is big time there. So let's go ahead now and zoom into that 15 minute chart. All right. 15 minute chart. Look at that 5127. Right. Remember, we, we just talked about that, that 5127 and that major double top high, double bottom low. Look at what it did yesterday at this level. Look what happened at 5127 after we dropped it. We could not get back above. That is very key. Right. Look at how the ES failed to get back above that 5127 yesterday. And right now you're starting to see a little bit of a failure as well. So this is absolutely level one today. All right. Level one right there, 5127, 5130. Is this where we reject? If we get above this level, we will possibly shoot straight up into the 5150, right? You could possibly shoot straight up into the 5150. However, just because we're shooting straight up into this level does not mean I'm looking too long this area. Um, I would look again for that 5150 Friday low rejection, right? This is Friday lows, 5150. After we broke that yesterday, we saw the big drop, right? So 5150, 5127, 5130. Level one, level two, all right? Above that, if we do reclaim that Friday low, you got that 50 SMA, that 5180 level that rejected like a beast yesterday. Uh, that is level three. And yesterday we talked about, hey, let's not long into that 5215, right? You can see right here, 5215, 5215. What a beautiful rejection that was yesterday. Perfect rejection of these previous highs from last week. Beautiful 52.15 rejection that sort of created this whole downside move. So right now, the fact that we're having struggle already at 51.27, 51.30 is concerning. I mean, that's at least, it, it's not concerning. It's weak, right? It's definitely concerning for upside. If we stay under this 51.27, that looks like more downside to me. You're starting to see that QQQ already start to get weak around that 4.33 level. Um, so Definitely some of these first rejection levels are in focus. SPY, uh, first level to watch is 507. 507, let me show you why. I'll go out to the four-hour chart. 507, you can see right here, that is a previous support, previous rejection, and previous support right here at 507. Now, the level we are holding to the downside, the level that is holding as support right now, is a pretty big level. If we look back to the left, look at this, 503, 503, double top high at 503. Why are we holding there? That is why, All right? That is why the SPY is holding 503 right now because we are holding at this double, double top high. We're trying to turn it into support here at $503 per share. So we have to be careful of shorting into 503. That's known, right? So we, if, if we want to short today, right, we don't want to get short right into this 503, we want that pop and fade, all right? That's what we want to look for. So 507 would be number one, all right? Number two would be that 509 Friday low, 
right? And number three for me would be that 511.50. That is sort of these lows from last week, 511.50. So I have 507, 509, 511.50 as my three levels to look for rejections. As of right now, we are already weakening at this SPY 507, at this ES 5130, uh, and we are already weakening at this QQQ 433 level. So we can definitely see some of this weakness stepping in on this pre-market upside. We would like to see a little bit more pre-market upside here um, before getting short into some of these demands below, right? We don't want to get too aggressive on the short side right into this 5080, um, and we definitely don't want to get too aggressive on the short side right into the 503. Uh, so we have to be careful of sort of the demand holds at this 503 that could step in. If we break under this 503 today, okay, if we do see that and we just sort of fail right back under this level, well, yeah, then we're getting weak, right? If we get under this 503, um, then I'm going to say you're moving right down into that 498.50 level. 498.50, if we go to the four-hour chart, 498.50, you can see right here, uh, is this next support, and then under that, 494. So, is there a gap there on the SPY? Let me see. Yeah, there is. Yeah, so under that 503.50, might even just be 503. I'm going to move that down to 503 just to be safe. So, under that 503, you guys can see, you got that gap down to that 498.50. Um, and, uh, yeah, that would be an interesting spot to look short right there under 503 right so let's watch that 503 today if we if we unfortunately don't get any bounce here to fade into then we have to watch the 503 and if we get under that you got gap time right i'm actually going to mark this out as a gap here for myself what i like to do is just make this yellow and make this like 90 95 percent transparent there we go. So I'll know, right, if we get under that 503, that we're starting to fill, we're starting to get into a gap. Gap below. Right there. And, uh, yeah, we have to know that, right? If we're under that 503, this could get aggressive. All right? And that's sort of that, we're already in that gap on the queues here. Okay? All right. Russell? Let's move out. Gapaholics. <laughs> Russell down into that 1960 area. That looks like the next support level. That's also the 200 SMA. So I'd watch this 1960 low. That's a 200 SMA on the Russell. You guys can see we're moving. Whoops. We're moving right into it. So this is big, right? 1960. That that one that 200 SMA on the Russell, we have to be a little bit careful of short side into a 200 SMA. That's a big level to be shorting into. Um, could the Russell go through it? Absolutely. Uh, but just be slightly cautious. Understand, hey, I'm shorting into a 200 SMA. It's sometimes a little bit difficult. Okay, so just be a little bit aware of that. 200 SMA, um, it might want to come back down to this, you know, 1913 area, back to this low right here. That's very possible, wanting to come back down and retest this low that was sort of, you know, created, that created that big upside. So you might be targeting that 1900 area. Um, but, man, I'd be just a little bit cautious into that 200 today on, uh, on the Russell. Could be a little bit of a bounce spot. Um, and then what a rejection up here, right, at that 2035 level. Right there, what a beautiful rejection that was. Previous lows into new highs. Previous lows, new highs. That's a beautiful flip there on the Russell. Um, this would be the really nice short. Do you get that? I don't know. But I would just say caution on shorts into the 200 SMA. Dow Jones getting a little bit of a pop this morning um, because of the UNH earnings. What a beautiful rejection that was. 100 SMA rejection yesterday. That's beautiful as well. You can see you're back above Friday's lows here on the on the Dow Jones. It's that 38.130 level. You can see right there we are back above that Friday low. Uh, so I'd say watch this Friday low. 
If the Dow holds above it, you could sort of move higher. If you get back below Friday's lows on the Dow, then that could be a reason to look short again. Um, so Friday's lows on the Dow, I'd watch that. And then I'd probably just watch this 100 SMA, guys. 38,590, 38, uh, 38, uh, right? Right in here. That's probably my next level I'd watch. What happens back at the 100 SMA? If the Dow pops back into the 100, what starts to occur there, right? So 100 SMA on Dow, Friday lows on Dow, and then this big 37.8 demand. Those are the levels that I have there. Okay, yeah, I like I like this to start to fake out the downside. I'd like for this to sort of fake out the downside down here, right? I would I want to see you know sort of those fake outs to the downside and get that bigger pop to the upside. I really don't have interest in shorting too close to this 5080 area on the ES. After that big drop yesterday and sort of this curl that we've seen so far today, we really, if we want to be aggressive on the short side today, guys, we really want that pop, right? We want that pop that starts to get weak. We want that pop that the bulls start losing interest, losing the battle, right? We want to get some of those bigger moves higher. We don't want to get you know, short by where the bulls are strong, all right? So if you are looking for that sort of continuation downside today, be careful getting too aggressive on it down here. These are some big demands, right? That uh, 17 eight is definitely a big demand on the NASDAQ, and we want to get some of that pop action before we get interested. So try to require that today for your trading, right? Tell yourself, hey, I don't want to get too short close to this demand. Let me require some kind of pop, and let me start to see if the market fades these moves before I start getting interested, all right? All right, that is the futures for now. Um, if you guys could, we got 2,300 people here. We got 700 likes. Hey, you guys are doing a pretty good job on the likes today. Appreciate that. Uh, Tesla, dead. I mean, dead, dead, dead. Looks really bad. I'm not going to lie. Um, here's, what it, here's, what's, here's what looks really bad to me. Um... I don't even know what drawing set I had for this. But let me go ahead and I'm going to keep that 150 there. This is what I wanted to show you. This looks like a very uh, sort of disciplined downside here. Let me show you why. Uh, this, this weekly chart on Tesla just looks like a very clear, you know, sort of weekly stair-stepping downside, right? Look at this right here on the weekly chart. You basically just had two of the same, you know, groups of of you know what is this maybe one two three four it's like every month is sort of the same every group of every month here every group of four or five weeks you can see previous lows new highs previous lows new highs just sort of stair stepping to the downside on the tesla weekly chart right look how clear this little stair step to the downside has been um downside stair stepping downside stair stepping right and this looks ready for that next move to the downside um i would say the target here on tesla the realistic target here if this chart continues to look the way it does uh would be 150 i really don't see any reason for tesla to hold up uh above 150 so you have 150 here on the weekly chart and that is right here 150 150. I would assume that's where Tesla wants to test, right? Around this 150 level. So let me go ahead and now zoom in a little bit closer here for you guys. Uh, I'm looking to see... Let me go ahead and zoom in. I'm looking to see if we drop this 160.50 low, right? 160.5. You guys can see right here, 160.5. If we drop that 160... Oh, we're already under that. Sorry. Let me put that on... Yeah, I forgot the... I forgot that we're uh, we got that we took off that pre market action. Um, so if if we stay under that one sixty point five, sorry, but I when I said that I was like, wait a second, I think Tesla's already under that. Um, so that previous low was one sixty point five, right? One sixty fifty. That was that previous low, right? And you can see here in the after hours action, pre market action, we have fallen aggressively below that. So. What are we looking for, right? What are we looking for? We are looking for that pop back into that low, right? That would be perfect on Tesla. If we can get a pop back into that 160.5 low, that would be the spot to look for the downside. 
Okay, so that is a big watch for me today. Can we get a pop on Tesla back into that 160.50, back into that 160.50? And if we do, if we start to see that weakness step in, is this turn into a rejection point? This was, remember that 167 level we talked about yesterday? That was the most beautiful rejection you could have found yesterday. 167, 167, 167. And even if we go back even further, we will see the 167 level. So 167 yesterday, right? 167, 67, 67, 67. And if we go to this five-minute chart, right, look at how gorgeous this was yesterday at 167. We had that drop under 167. We had that bear flag start a form. We had right here, right? You can see that bear flag action right there, right back into that 167 uh, re rejection point. Bam, right? And from there, the rest is history. So that 167 level was a thing of beauty. And one of you guys messaged me and said you caught this. And I'm very happy to see that some of you guys caught this one because this was probably play of the day. I mean, that's probably the cleanest short you could have found yesterday on a break and retest of our 167 level. Beautiful stuff there. So today, we're going to look for the same damn thing, right? We're going to look for that pop. We're going to start to see if that one, we're going to look for that sort of bear flag, right? See if this thing starts to bear flag into that 160.5, right? And then see if this is a failure move. That's what I'm going to look for today on Tesla. So 160.5 on Tesla, big watch there. If we get above that, I'm watching 164. If we get above that, I'm watching 167. All right. NVIDIA. So NVIDIA is holding above an important level right now, which is something to pay attention to, right? So 30-minute chart on NVIDIA, you can see we have turned this 863 level back into a support. So this is important, right? Right here, 863. And look at what we're doing right now. So if we go down to the five-minute chart, look at this. 863 is holding back into support. So we don't want to get aggressive shorting into that, right? This 863 level is definitely trying to hold on. We don't want to short into that 863, that's for sure. Um, so 863, important hold level. I'd watch that. We could, if we fail below that, then sure. But right now, we are holding above it. So no shorts into that 863. To the upside, we're watching 875 right here. 875, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then yesterday, 875, take a look at this, right? Go to the five minute chart. Look at that 875 yesterday. Drop, pop, rejection. Beautiful there. So I'm going to be watching that same area 875, 873, that whole area over here, right? If we pop into that, what do we do? That's going to be my watch right there. If we pop back into that 875 level, what do we start to see there, right? What do we start to see at that 875? Beautiful rejection yesterday on this pop in the supply on, on NVIDIA up at that 910. Congrats if you caught that. Um, yeah, that's about it. You can see down here we have a little bit of support slipping in back at that. Yeah, it's right around that eight, yeah, 857, 856, 855. It's like 855, I'd say, right there. I'd say 855 is where that NVIDIA is trying to hold. So it looks like NVIDIA is getting some action to the upside. 875 would be my level to watch. If you get over 875, I think I lose interest in the short side, personally. Right? If we get over that 875, uh, I think I lose the interest in the short side, in the short term at least. Right? Because then I think NVIDIA is actually trying to sort of reclaim some levels. So I don't really like shorts if we're over 875 on NVIDIA. Maybe it's up at this 885, but I would prefer to let it, you know, I'd prefer to be under 875 if I'm looking short. AMD, <laughs> it's, it's even with yesterday's downside in the market, AMD did not drop. So what we talked about yesterday on AMD in the live stream is still sort of valid here. And uh, I know it was not strong yesterday by any means, but it definitely did not drop the way that the market did. It feels like AMD is just sort of trying to, uh, control itself around this 100 SMA. But for now, AMD stays weak as long as it's under 165. If AMD does at any point get over 165, then I think you could get that sort of move higher and that, uh, and that you know, that move higher, the hold over 860, 165, and then maybe the pop into like this 175. So we'll see. 
right? It depends on the market, of course. Uh, but 165 is really that level that we need to get above. If we can get above 165, I think you can see upside. Uh, and it really is holding up pretty well. You have an upgrade this morning on uh, Evercore. Evercore AMD outperformance rating, 200 price target, which could help it out a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a pretty solid hold again on AMD. Really didn't move lower yesterday with the market downside. And uh, yeah, I mean, it feels like a no trade as well, Rye. I agree, right? Yesterday's action was hideous. Um, but it's something to sort of monitor, right? It's something to sort of keep your eyes on. It's like something you hawk a little bit. Because if the market does flip at some point, I really do believe that AMD is down at a really good value area here. So going to be watching that, you know, sort of 165. Going to be watching that 158. Seeing what it does here um, on AMD. Uh, TSM, we saw that downside yesterday under 143. We are failing back under that major 143 level. So what am I looking for today? Well, I'm going to be looking for probably just a pop in the 143, right? To be quite honest, uh, earnings is approaching, so I'm not that interested in trading this. Uh, but if we do get a pop in the 143, I'll look for the fade. I'll look for the fade at 143. That's something I'll keep an eye on there. MU, um, holding on to its very important level, 120. This level has been a level that has to hold on MU. You can see right here, MU 120, 120. You can see again it's holding on. Uh, so if MU holds 120, then I would not short into it. If we can get under 120, then sure, it could be a nice short down into that 20 SMA at 117. Um, but if you hold that 120, right, then MU has a chance to go back higher, right? So be careful that 120 on MU. This has been a major hold level. You're back at it today and could be a little bit of a hold today. Watch that MU. Um, let's go to SMCI. I really don't like much on SMCI here. I think SMCI is just trading in a 100-point range right now. So, you know, do your, your, your best judgment to trade within this range. Obviously, you know what I'm going to say. You look for shorts up here. You look for longs down here. Uh, so you have about a 100-point range on SMCI right now between 950 and 850. You're going to have to trade that channel if you want to get involved. Uh, the last semiconductor that we'll look at here is ARM because ARM 120 is big-time stuff. If we break 120 at some point in the future here, I think ARM gets sort of dismantled. Um, 120, right? 120. Big, big low on ARM here. Uh, it's holding again today, so I would not short into it. This could be an ARM push back into supply around 130. Um, but yeah, keep an eye on that 120. I have an alert set at 120. All right. Meta. Meta, probably my top watch today because I think this is a almost no-brainer short that I would take if it starts to set up, okay? That's just, if I'm wrong today, guys, if I come back to the live stream tomorrow and I took a loss on Meta, I don't care at all. Um, so if we get a pop here into this 507 and into this 20 SMA, I am absolutely going to be looking for short side. Um, so I'm looking to see if Meta can sort of slowly grind higher into this 507 today. And then looking to see if that's where the rejection comes in. So that's a big watch for me today. You have the 20 SMA here. You have previous lows. You have a major previous low from last week. Another major previous low from last week. And a major previous high here at 507. Um, so 507, big time watch for me today. 20 SMA. If we get that grind higher today, I am going to start to look for that action back to the downside, back to that 497. So... That's something I watch on Meta today. We'll see what happens there. Uh, Amazon, really not much interest in Amazon. I think you can watch the 185 level if you'd like, right? You can maybe look to see if that 185 gets a rejection. Uh, so keep eyes on 185, but I'd say that support at 183 is holding pretty strong. I'd say 185 is a good watch. Google, yeah, Google's starting starting to reject some of these previous lows. So you see right here, right, some of these previous lows around that 157. Um, I would keep an eye on that today. Google around 157, does it reject these previous lows? If it gets a little bit higher, then I'd watch the 158, right? 158, 157, two levels I'd be watching on Google today. Coinbase, man, Whew, what a trade and what a miss. A swing and a miss for me on Coinbase. Uh, this was a sexy trade yesterday. Um, beautiful rejections at this little, uh, it really was like the previous day lows, but it, I mean, it could be anywhere in here, around this 250, 
right at that 250 level. What a beautiful rejection that came in yesterday. So we had that, obviously, that channel high rejection we've talked about, that 260. We had that 250 fail yesterday right at that 20 SMA. What a slip and slide. Um, so unfortunately, uh, you can't get short into this today, in my opinion, if it's down where it is, right? This is a big demand down here, 213, 218 area. You do not want to short into this four-hour demand, which has caused major upside. So I wouldn't have no interest in shorting here today. You have that 50 SMA below as well. So for me in the short term, that short is over. Uh, but what I would love to see more than anything would be a pop in the 235. If we can get a pop in the 235, that's where I would look for the re-entry. So let me go out to the hourly chart here. If we can get a pop, right, back into this low, back into this low, if we can start to see this and then a rejection here, that's what I would look for on Coinbase to continue the downside trade. So unfortunately, no shorts down here, but if we start to pop into this 235, that would be something I'd be watching. You could try to long Coinbase if you'd like. Uh, I didn't say to do that, so, you know, up to you. But I would say the likelihood is that Coinbase tries to bounce off this level. So is there a little short-term trade there? Maybe. Uh, but I would be more interested in just waiting for that 235. All right, um, let's go to do, do, do. Netflix has earnings this week. I don't think I have much for you on Netflix. I would just say Netflix did hold an important 600. It broke under that 615, right? So what are we looking for? We're looking for that 615 rejection. 600 is a strong demand. Square, Square's in a gap, but I really don't like Square at the 100 SMA. I would not be interested in shorting Square in this gap. Uh in the 100 SMA, so I'd be careful there. Yeah, the other thing I'd be watching out, guys, for, am I still holding NVIDIA calls? I have not had NVIDIA calls since last week, my friend. Um, uh, the other thing I'd be watching here, guys, if you are going to trade, uh, you know, sort of Bitcoin-related stocks, is 60000 on Bitcoin, right? I think that is, without a doubt, going to be a major, major sort of uh, sign of what Bitcoin is going to do. Right. So if Bitcoin starts to get weak under 60K, right, then we know, hey, this is going to get bloody. Right. I think Bitcoin under 60K could start a pretty decent sell off on on uh, Bitcoin. So that's going to be such a level in focus for anyone that's trading Bitcoin or watching Bitcoin. That's 60,000 level. I mean, under 60K, I think you probably drop, you know. 15 percent like overnight. I mean, this is a pretty much straight up move overnight, 15% overnight, pretty much right here. You guys know what happens when you start to trade in these low volume gaps. Bitcoin is no substitute to that rule, right? So if you get under that 60,000, I'd say Bitcoin drops to like 53 pretty quickly. Uh, if that happens and you're in Coinbase, you're going to have a hell of a party. Uh, so we'll see, right? Keep an eye on that 60K on Bitcoin. That's going to be big. Um, all right, guys, that's about all I got for you. Uh, it's about 8.50. Um, it's time for me to head out. You guys know the levels. You know the game plan. You know we're not shorting into these lows, right? 17.8, big demand on NASDAQ. Uh, on ES, we got that demand down below at 50.80. We don't want to be shorting into those demands today. We know what levels we're watching. We're coming into our first level, 51.27, 51.30. SPY is starting to come into its first level at 5.07, right? So big level there. And then the QQQ is starting to come into that major 433. All right. Some big levels to watch today, guys. I hope this helps you. Um, going to be very much focused on this today. Laser focused. Going to be probably more patient than I should. But I think that'll be a good thing for me today. So what? let's watch those levels. Press that like button if you guys could. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're here every day starting at 8 a.m. every single morning. So if you guys are not subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you would. Help me get to 80,000 subs. Yeah, uh, Abercrombie and Fitch. Yeah, uh, let's go to... That is something I have been hawking. I think you want to see ANF under 110, my friend. If you are looking for ANF, uh, I'd say ANF under 110 is where it could get interesting. All right? ANF under 110. All right, guys. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.